the um, with the factor theorem. So let me make us an example here. Give me a second. I need to make it up here with my computer because if I just make it on the fly, I always multiply some number wrong and and then I waste your time. So let me. Everybody, everybody's uh, top hat already. I can close that, right? Uh, 54, 54, 59, you can try again. Maybe it was my computer sleeping, I don't know, 54, you've already tried five times? Yeah. All right, well, yeah, whatever. Um, sorry about that. If it were up to me, we wouldn't do it, you know what I mean? All right, so let's look at... My next example will be, come on, what number are we, uh, four? That's not right. That's not example three. You guys, let me give you a, what, what example is this? This is five, isn't it? I think. If I remember right, I did two parabolas, then I did, that's my third one of those, isn't it? So unless I've, well, I guess the numbering of examples isn't super important, but I think this is example six. Um, okay, so we want to graph y equals to f of x. In this case, I'm giving us x to the power four minus x cubed um, minus 18x squared. Um, plus 16x, um, plus 32. All right, and um, this problem comes with a hint. It says that f of 2 is interesting, and f of minus 1 are interesting. So what on earth does that mean? Well, it means you should probably take a look at them, right? So what would you do? <laughs> Sad. Oh, you don't have to get up. Thank you, though. So why don't we try plugging in minus, plug in 2. What do you get? F of 2 is what? 2 to the power 4, which is 16. 2 to the power 3, which is 8. 18 times 4 plus uh, 16 times 2 is uh, 32, plus 32. What do, you, what do you got here? Try crunching those numbers. What do you get? 16 minus 8, minus 18 times 4, plus 32, plus 32. We get, oh, we get 0. Aha. Uh -huh. And probably you won't be surprised when I tell you f of minus 1 is 1 minus a minus 1 minus 18 times 1 plus 16 times minus 1 plus 32, which if you take a step back and look at it is what? 1 plus 1 plus 32, so that's 34 minus 18 minus 16. It also is 0. All right, so if we, if we evaluate the function at 2 and at minus 1 we get 0. What does that tell us? That tells us by the factor theorem that x minus 2 and x plus 1 are factors. Right? These are factors. Which means if we multiply them that's also a factor. Right? And multiply these out we got what? x squared um, minus x minus 2 so this must be a factor of my polynomial by the factor theorem. All right. <coughs> okay, so because if, if x minus 2 is a factor and x plus 1 is a factor, then the product of factors is also a factor. That's the way it works. All right. And, and so what do, I, what do I mean by that? I mean that, hey, you could write up here x squared minus x minus 2 times something 
you could do that. But can you do that? Right? Can you actually do it? Eventually I'll remember to move the camera. <laughs> Sorry guys. My bad. I mean you guys are here, so <laughs> my apologies to the people not here. Uh, <clears throat> how do you how do you find the something? Let me ask you a related question. 300, it's equal to 12 times something. How do you find the something? Here's how you could do it. You take 300 and you divide 12 into it. Right? How many times does 12 go into 3? None. 30 goes in twice. So you get 24. You subtract, you get 60. And then that gives you a 5. You bring down the 60. You get the remainder 0, right? That tells me that 300 is actually 12 times 25. Now, we usually, we usually package this calculation like this, right? 300 divided by 12 equals to 25, right? That's usually how you look at it in, like, in you know, school math, let's say. Middle school, whatever. Elementary, I hope. Actually, how many people, don't tell me. If you were such a person that did not see long division in your elementary school, you have my condolences. That is unfortunate. You were cheated, right? We should all learn long division. There are some people who are not teaching long division anymore to the children. Those people exist. Were you taught by such a person? I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Um, I hope you were, because then what I'm about to do is a natural an analog, which is that we can divide polynomials. We can do what's called polynomial long division. And the way that works is just the same, pretty much. You write down the one you're trying to factor which in this case is x to the fourth minus x cubed minus 18x squared plus 16x plus 32. We're trying to factor that guy. What are we trying, to, the factor we're trying to put into it is x squared minus x minus two. All right. And now let's do it. So the question is how do you get x to the fourth, right? We can get x to the fourth by multiplying our dividing polynomial, our factor, by x squared. We multiply this by x squared, all right? That's going to produce an x to the fourth. When I multiply x squared times this, I'm getting x to the fourth minus x cubed minus 2x squared, all right? Yeah. Now. I write like this with a minus to remind myself I have to distribute the minus and add. So something nice happens here, right? And something rather beautiful. The x to the fourth cancels, but also, this doesn't always happen, the x cubed also cancels. All right, that's going to make it so you're not late to the next class. It's a good thing. So this one, minus 18 minus and minus 2 is minus 16x squared. And then I've got 16x and I got a 32 I bring down. That. Some people write a bunch of zeros in here and stuff. I don't need to do that. We just keep track of powers, okay? If you have another notation you're fond of for writing this, then more power to you. You can do that as long as you write things that are correct at the end, yeah? Anyway, so then how do I get this minus 16x squared from the dividing polynomial? I have to do what? Multiply this by minus 16. If I multiply that by minus 16, that gives me a minus 16x squared plus 16x. And then what's 16 times 2 is, is 32, right? So plus 32. And, well, that's good because now when we take the difference, what do we get? We get 0. The remainder is 0. We had better get <laughs> remainder 0 for these problems, otherwise you did something wrong. I mean, if it is a factor, you should have a remainder of zero. All right? So what does all this mean? This means that our polynomial, we have, we have factored it actually, right? And so the polynomial now, we have f of x is equal to, as it happens, 
x squared minus x minus 2, the something turns out was just x squared minus 16, right? Which you could have figured out by guessing, I'm sure, if you had some time. And now we can factor, right? Because we already know the first one factors is what? x minus 2, um, x plus 1, and the last one's difference of squares. So that's x plus 4, x minus 4. So our x-intercepts, we've got a minus 4, we've got a minus 1, we've got a 2, we've got a 4. I put my pluses in, I put my minuses in, plus, minus, plus. It flips every sign because every power is odd. It's all it's all crossings. There's no bouncing in this one. The graph looks like looks like what? We like that. There you go. There's the graph y equals f of x. This, obviously, was harder than the other examples today. Why? Because I had to introduce long division. Now, um, important things to note. In your homework, there are a number of places where it says use synthetic division to do whatever. Every time it says use synthetic division, you can cross that out, just cross it out, and write in its place in your mind. I know you can't really cross out the electronic homework, right? But imagine crossing it out. If you need to, write on your computer screen, do so. And, and write it in its place, long division, which is, which is this. We can solve all problems of division using long division. We do not need to talk about synthetic division. Now, if you learned synthetic division in a previous class and you still are comfortable with it and want to use it, more power to you. However, I do need you to learn the long division for this class. So, and you'll see why. I'm going to post a video, a supplemental video here, hopefully tomorrow. And there'll be an a, assignment that's worth like 10 points, um, 10 participation points. Now, for like my Monday, Wednesday, Friday class, that'll be, due, that'll be due Monday after break for them. For you guys, it's due Thursday because I don't want you to have to work over break. They're not meeting Wednesday, so that's why it's due for them on Monday. But you guys, you just have Thursday off, right? It's fall break, right? Yeah, so I don't want to give you an assignment over fall break. But I, it would be good for you to watch the video when you have free time. Either if you have time in break, fine. If you don't, sometime the week after break, okay? And that, we, that video I'm going to post is going to be example after example after example after example of long division, which you guys need to see tons of examples of, right? Because maybe you're not comfortable with it yet, and that's okay. Anyway, thanks guys. Have a good break. Uh-huh.